From Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, and the home of hot chicken, it's the Rick Altizer Show. Sit back, buckle up. Rick will talk with the movers, shakers, and creators who put Christ in Christian entertainment. He's a man who's clear so the world can hear. Here's Rick Altizer. When my life is like a storm. You are listening to Addison Road, and I have the lead singer, songwriter from that band, Jenny Simmons, with me today. Jenny, welcome to the show. Hey, Rick. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. Uh, Jenny Simmons is the lead singer for the band Addison Road, which uh, earned a Dove Award uh, nomination for Best New Artist. Mm -hmm. Uh, They've toured the country, and now she is an author. Uh, uh, She has a new book out called Made Well. It's a well-made book, <laughs> made well, and uh, Jenny, thanks for coming to the show today. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. So talk to me about, uh, you came from uh, Texas, right? from uh, Dallas, Texas area. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about, uh, oh, I, 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 I want to be in a band, I'm writing <laughs> songs, I like to sing, and, and putting a band together. How did all that come about? Oh. Well, so I think you have to backtrack to my parents, who were... Like both saved, radically saved in the 70s, um, had never um, really heard about Christianity. And so their first taste of it was music, you know, was all the music that they were introduced to. So as a little girl, I grew up on all the old school records. Um, We had everybody playing in the house. And I fell in love with music as a little girl. My parents are both in ministry, still are. And their rule in our house growing up was you can listen to whatever music you want. We're not going to force you to listen to Christian music, but we won't pay for any of the other stuff. We won't let you go to any of the concerts and we won't fund it. But if it's Christian music, we'll take you to any concert you want to go to. We'll stand in any autograph line you want to be in. And so I took them up on it. I fell in love with Christian music as a little girl. And I can't tell you how many times dad would take me out of school to go like stand in line to meet Amy Grant or to meet, um, you know, whoever was coming through town, DC Talk ended up being my favorite. So we would stand in line to meet Toby Mac, you know, for hours, and I would skip school. And so I had these, in my opinion, really cool parents who just like fostered this love for music inside of me. And um, I got to for college. skipping school and then music. What a great, what a yeah. great combo! <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> they would take me to all the shows and let me kind of, you know, get out of school. And so I got to college thinking I would get a real job. And I met a guy and fell in love with him. And we ended up um, doing music together. We were, he loved music. I loved it. And so before I knew it, I thought, well, wait a minute, this thing that I've always loved and sort of followed and chased after, maybe I could do it too. And so we started writing songs in college. And by the time we were finished and ready to graduate, we had formed a band and and we decided, you know what, we're just going to give it a shot. And you made some uh, independent albums, maybe like three or four yeah. independent records, mm-hmm. and then got signed uh, by INO Records, a Christian label here. Yep. So talk about how that transitioned from making independent records, kind of tooling around as a local band, mm-hmm. to getting a record deal. Can we talk about that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, maybe I should attribute it to Richard Simmons, like the workout guru guy. Because <laughs> he would always say, if you don't feel like working out, you put your workout clothes on. And there's a good chance that once the clothes are on, that you'll actually end up working out. And so I remember hearing that, and it stuck with me forever. And I told my husband, I was like, we should just do that with band stuff. Like, just pretend 
that we're bigger than we are, that we're further down the road than we are, that we're more accomplished than we actually are. And eventually maybe we'll catch up. And so that's kind of how we live. Like he would create um, press kits. Back in the day, we'd print these press kits and we'd send them out to every youth pastor we could get an address for in the state of Texas. Every, you know, every fifth quarter, local coffee shop, BSU student union, whatever, we would play it and we'd send out these these promo packs that made us look amazing, but we were terrible. And um, <laughs> and we were like, eventually we'll catch up with what we're like putting out there. And so we we did that. We pl- I mean, I've, we probably played a thousand, uh, literally a thousand shows in Texas at every little stop sign, Dairy Queen you can find in the state. And eventually, I think that's what got us our record deal because when the A and R guy reached out to us, he said, "We've been following you guys since college, and we and we think you have a lot of work to do on your songwriting, but." You're the hardest working band we've seen, <laughs> and you've played hundreds and hundreds of shows, and you've sold tons of these independent albums by yourself. And so, if you can work that hard and already have some talent at writing songs, then um, we want to work with you. It is an amazing thing. You're listening to the Rick Altizer Show on Bot Radio, eighty nine point one FM, eleven sixty AM, Nashville. Which is a common trait you see with Christian record labels now. A lot of people. And, and, you know, the reason I'm talking about this, because we'll, we're in Nashville. A mm-hmm. lot of people want to know. I get all the time. Can you talk to my son? He wants to do music. Can yep. you talk to my daughter? Uh, so for those who are listening who have sons or daughters or might be those sons or daughters who are interested <laughs> in this, this is a, a, a great show to listen to today. Yeah. Um, but that is a common trait you see with A&R guys, which is, uh, okay, how many have they sold on their own? Yes. And then once, okay, they've sold 50000 on their own, now it's a no-brainer for them. There's no risk. Mm-hmm. So they know they put in an album, they're going to sell 50000 So exactly. uh, you know, that's So, that, so, so you, you worked it and worked it and worked it right. and proved it, and mm-hmm. then they came along and saw the numbers and said, okay, we can do this. Yep. So then now talk about, okay, so I'm in Dallas. We've made these, these independent records. We're working mm-hmm. our tail ends off, going all over. Really working it hard, and now we've got a national record deal mm-hmm. with national distribution. So now yeah. what happens? So now we um, we hit the road, and we well actually um, we came to Nashville, and he our A and R guy said, okay, so we're going to start writing for this first record that you're gonna that you're gonna do. And, um, you know, here we are, these, like, just think we're on top of the world, right? Because we've signed this record deal finally. We've been working for years. And we we put out, like, 15 or 16 songs to the record label. Like, what do you think about these? And they were like, nope, 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 not good enough, not good enough, not. And so it became this, like, rigorous year of songwriting. And for the first um, Addison Road album, it's a self-titled album, and th- that we have like three or four songs that I think collectively spent 60 weeks in the top 10. So you're talking about songs that ended up being incredibly highly successful. We wrote 140 songs for that album. 140. <laughs> before the record label was like, okay, there's 10 we like. We were like, oh my gosh. So um, that took a year and a half. A That's year not even and a half. percent Oh. They didn't even pick 10%. I know. That's no. less than 10% of your songs. Believe they me. Believe me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> ah. So we wrote for a long time, and I'm grateful for that. But that season, I mean, there were so many times where you're like, nope, never mind. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is what it looks like. But, you know, it was it was taking what they would call my diary entry songs and songs that we, as artists we felt fiercely like personally uh, invested in that we had to protect and realizing that actually the um the calling was to to take that song and that idea and and make it palatable not marketable necessarily but palatable like a song that an 80-year-old woman could enjoy and an 8-year-old could enjoy and i learned really fast that that didn't mean cheapening the art that meant that I was a better artist. If I could write a song that an 80-year-old and an 8-year-old could both appreciate on some level, then I was, I was infinitely better than how I started. And so you've got these, uh, th- you spend a year songwriting, and then you get your 10 songs, album comes out, you go and you record it, mm-hmm. then, then where do you go from there? We toured. We toured like crazy. How many days a year would you do? Oh, gosh. In the beginning, I mean, 250-something. Like 250 days a year. Yeah. Right. I mean, we, it was it was nonstop for. And you're married at this time. <laughs> 
Yes. Yeah, we're married. Have you had your first daughter yet? No, I haven't had the first daughter yet. We waited quite a while. Um, and when we when I had Annie, um, trying to navigate that, especially as the female lead singer, you've got a lot of men on the road that have kids and their wives are back home. And that's a little bit of a different story. Or their wives are are traveling with them, but they're not on stage. And so trying to navigate being a mom and being on stage as the lead singer, it, it was... I, it was very hard. So you start out, you're unknown, mm-hmm. except for your your fans in Texas. Right. Outside of that, you're unknown. Right. So there's are, are the is, is every are there other people who are married in the band at this time? Um, at that time, there was another guy that was married. We sort of had a rare band experience in that we were the same members the entire eleven years. And so that doesn't happen a lot. So we we ended up watching all the guys get married, but they were just in the beginning three of us that were married. So did the wife uh, of your other, the other person, did his wife go on the road? I mean, you and your husband had it made. You're both in the right. band. Right, exactly. So you get to tour together, but d- did the other wife come on the road? No. So, hey, I'm gone. Now, 250 days a year Yeah. <laughs> yep. leaves me home 100 days a year Yeah. when I'm not in the studio recording the next record exactly. or doing the other things. Exactly. Catching up. So there's that. Mm-hmm. And today, in today's world, airplay and album sales have fallen off Crazy. dramatically. Yep. So that is the norm now is to be mm-hmm. on the road like to tour. that. Yeah. So so we're on the road, we're touring, and all of a sudden you're you get nominated for a dub for best new artist. Right. Uh you've got songs on the radio. Right. Okay. Hey, mm-hmm. I've got songs on Christian radio. So my record sales, I'm selling millions of albums. Is that right? <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. You tell me Christian radio doesn't <laughs> sell millions of records? I think back in the 90s it did. <laughs> in the heyday before iTunes and, um, you know, streaming and all the digital stuff that we have at our fingertips and like real live albums, you know, mm-hmm. relics. They're relics. Yes. Um, but no, I think even to date, probably, what is it, 2016 now? So our first album came out on the record label in 08, 2008. So probably from 2008 to 2016, I think we're sitting at 250,000 copies. Units? Yeah, units. Okay. That's a, you know. For a, for a whole career. For a whole career. <laughs> yeah. Split that for uh Five ways. Right. But then you go to YouTube <laughs> and you can see videos that like million plus hits, million uh-huh. plus hits. So it's it's different now. It's yeah. 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 Um it's but, but are you able world. to fund yourself? Are you able to uh it was you know, for us it was really hard. It just was hard. I mean, I think financially um, that was the biggest reason our, the band came to an end. It's like, no, we couldn't, we couldn't juggle it all. Um, to try to, you know, things you don't think about, like health insurance. And um, it, once you have kids, like having to have a nanny or somebody on the road that can walk alongside you. And also we had a, just a, a sort of rare um, series of an unfortunate events, which is what led to me writing my first book. It's called The Road to Becoming. And it's sort of the end of Addison Road. So anybody that followed our music can pick up that book and start with sort of how it all imploded. Not relationally, but just this is what it looked like to try to make it in the industry and not be able to keep our heads above water. And then spiritually, the book is about what it looks like. It's it's called The Road to Becoming, Rediscovering Your Life in the Not How I Planned It Moments. <laughs> and at the end of the band was the Not How I Planned It Moment. It didn't end the way I thought it was going to end. And so what does it look like spiritually to walk into new seasons um, of life that you aren't expecting, that you aren't planning on, and, um, and, and seeing God's faithfulness in the midst of that, in the midst of those dreams that you thought, well, that's not how I dreamed it ending. Um, and, and, and what it's like to live through those seasons. So in case you didn't realize it, you're listening to a really nice guy, the Rick Altizer show on bot radio, 89.1 FM, 1160 AM Nashville. I'm uh, talking with Jenny Simmons, singer, songwriter, and now author. Mm-hmm. From the band Addison Road, we're gonna yeah. we are gonna get to your book. Yeah, <laughs> I promise. <laughs> but this is this is an interesting uh, you know journey. Journey, absolutely. Uh, because she, again, uh, people are are interested. Mm-hmm. Well, my son wants to be in music. Well, right. okay, this is what you need to know. 
So, uh, and I had that same, I was a recording artist uh, back in the day as, mm-hmm. uh, for me. And uh, I was also an entrepreneur. And so mm-hmm. I had the option to go on the road for 250 days a year and make one half the income yep. I was currently making and be gone for 250 days a year with two kids at home and a stay home mom. Mm-hmm. And it was just a no brainer for me. It was like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> You know, so, I mean, there, there really is. So when you're first starting out, that first tour, mm-hmm. you're going out with other artists. Right. Uh, are you paying to be on the tour? Um, you know, that was shocking to me that that was even a thing. No, we had a big, big, big band who will remain unnamed who, who said, hey, we'd love for you to open up for us on tour. It's only going to cost you $500 a night. <laughs> so I laughed out loud. I was like, are you serious? Like, we have to pay? So how do you make money then? Well, off of CD sales, which obviously we've already discussed, did not make enough. So we didn't do that. We ended up going out with Sanctus Real for almost an entire year. We did a fall tour and a spring tour with them and didn't have to pay to go out on that. Um, I don't know that we made much money, but even on our our biggest tour was an arena tour. It it was um, there was a lot of money being made and exchanged hands but our band um i think we were paid a thousand dollars a night which might seem like a lot but if you're doing 50 shows that's fifty thousand dollars you're trying to pay salary for five people health insurance pay for your travel pay for your hotels that's hotels travel expenses right. food gas babysitters I mean, that, for, that money goes away real quick there's no money so, i mean yeah. yeah you so we could pay for you know and people see the buses you know, you know even me growing up i'm like oh my gosh there's this tour bus you don't realize how expensive a tour bus is. And then not only do you have to rent the tour bus and hire a driver and pay for the driver's lodging and food and everything, but then the gas, gas alone, you know, you fill up and it's like $800 or something insane. Um, yeah, you would get to the end of it and just, there was no, there was, you can be on the top in radio and you can't pay your bills. Yes. Which is uh, common. Right. And so then after 10 years of, of beating your head and, and uh, working it, working it, working it and going, you know what, we're just, yep. you know, the, yeah. then, the, then the band amicably came to a decision, hey, mm-hmm. let's go find some other things to do and yeah. stay home. Yeah. You know, for us, it was a series of events. We, we went to start our first arena tour with Mercy Me, Jeremy Camp, Hawk Nelson, um, and we we woke up and left the apartment and went downstairs to get in our van and trailer, and it, w- it was gone. It had been stolen from our parking lot. And right before you go on tour, you know, you, you, you get everything. You buy all the merch and the T-shirts and CDs. And so everything we, we had for our business had been stolen, all of our instruments, all, you know, 3,000 CDs, whatever. Um, that was the first thing. We replaced it all with insurance money. It was stolen three months later from a different parking lot in a different city. Three months later, we had rented um, an, a 16-passenger van to try to travel in and got in a head-on collision and totaled it. Mm. And then we started on tour with Sanctus Real. And at this point, we had borrowed an RV from another band in town. Um, and they were like, Why don't you, we're on, you know, on sabbatical with our family. Just take our RV out. And we got three days into that tour, and the RV, it blew up. It's, I mean, it doesn't even sound like a real story, but it, I promise you can Google Addison Road Fire, and it shows it, it shows the RV, like, yeah, fireballing. I, into I saw the, the pictures online. Yeah, yeah, and so, so yeah, we. I mean, it was one of those situations as an artist that you, you got one step behind. It helped me understand people that, um, you know, they have a health scare, they have a health issue in their family, and how fast that can tank you as a as a family, as a person. Like, you get one payment behind, you get too much in debt, you lose too much footing. And there's like, there was absolutely no way to recover. So we've got about, I'm looking here, I'm with Jenny Simmons, singer, songwriter, and author from the band Anderson Road. And we're having yeah. a great talk here. I'm seeing that we've just got a, probably about five minutes left. Okay. <laughs> uh, how do you feel about doing two interviews? Oh, sure. That's You're fine. You're good? Yeah, Okay, totally. so, so, so now this is part one of my interview with Jenny Simmons. We, <laughs> You're listening to part one of my interview with Jenny Simmons, and next week will be part two, which will, which will really unpack the book more. But this yeah. is really great we're, because, uh, okay, so your daughter, who you have two daughters now. You have right. uh, one who's a second grader? Yeah. 
What is her name? Her name's Annie. 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 And then Lucy is here with us. In the studio. Yay. It's her first radio interview <laughs> in studio. How old is Lucy? She's five weeks. Five weeks. Five weeks old. So Jitty is here after having a yeah. baby five weeks ago. So. Well, you know, it's better. When Annie was born at five weeks, we were flying out of Dallas to do Spirit West Coast in San Diego. And that was it. She, We never came home. She lived her first three years in buses, airplanes. She's done 320 flights. We'd get on a plane and a pilot would say, oh, sweetie, is it your first flight? And she'd look at her, me, and she'd say, I think it's my 145th. <laughs> <laughs> and they, their whole mouth would just drop. Like, who, what is this child talking about? So, um, yeah, you that's another element, too, is raising your babies on the road. That's, can, you, can we talk about that? Yeah. Going on the road with children. Mm-hmm. And what's that looking like? You know, for me, I think that was one of the absolute most profound, profoundly beautiful gifts I could have ever given Annie. Um, and it, at first, I was a little bit hesitant um, because, you know, there's you walk into Barnes & Noble or Lifeway and there are entire walls of how to par- parent well, <laughs> what your schedule should look like and all that. And I would read these books and just cry and be racked with guilt and think, oh, my gosh, I'm not raising my baby this way. Like. No, she doesn't. I'm not inoculating her from people. She's on an airplane. And I would get to a show and we would have it written in our contract that um, that they had to provide a child care worker, you know, and I didn't get to vet them like my girlfriends back home who were like, there is no way I'm letting this person touch my baby. And whereas I would have to show up and say, I have to let this person touch my baby because I have to get on stage and, and work. And so um, my women's pastor back home, she was really wonderful. She said, Jenny, the way that moms get to parent in this country is a luxury. And, um, and she said, you, she said, don't look to books for how to parent your baby. She said, Jesus actually knows how to parent your child. So don't ask other moms, don't ask other books because they don't know what you're living in and Mm -hmm. what situation you ask the Lord each day. How do I parent her well today in this city, in this state, in this wherever I find myself, airport or RV. And she said, if you're in Africa, you don't get an option. You strap your baby to your back and you get back out into the fields and you work. If you're in Laos or Myanmar or, you know, fill in the blank of a third world country or nation, Mm -hmm. um, you don't, you don't get to pick how you mother. Uh, You just do the best you can with the circumstances you have. And, and so I really took that to heart. And for me, that was liberating and freeing. And I began to just ask the Lord, show me how to mother her. And remind me that this is a gift that I'm giving her. It looks different than everybody else's, right. and that's okay. So, uh, Annie, now uh, for four, we're going to go. We're going to fast forward 14 years from now. She's, <laughs> she's 16. Right. Oh, mom, I just have to sing. I just love to sing, mom. Uh, you know, I just want to be on a stage. I just love no. watching American Idol <laughs> and The Voice. And Oh, I just want to do that. I want to spend my life as a singer. I have to sing. Oh, the Lord has given me this gift. I just want to sing. <sighs> so what do you tell Annie? Marry a doctor. <laughs> 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 oh, um, gosh, that's hard. She's in that phase now. She writes songs, she sings, she loves it, and I want to nurture the gifts that the Lord has given her. And I also want her to know what she's walking into. Um, and I want her Help to... Help our mothers understand that, because they're living, they're living what I've just described to you. Yep. I've got listeners that are living that. Yes. Can you help them out, Being a, coming from the side you're coming from? Absolutely. I, you know, I say, um, nurture th- your children's gifts. Um, absolutely. The Lord gives us gifts that are, are meant um, to be used for His glory and meant to be used for our joy and satisfaction, I think, too. And, and there's nothing wrong with us letting our babies like grow into that thing, but tell them to bloom where they're planted, which is, which is what we did and give them a realistic picture, I think, of what you're walking into. Um, and, yeah. And start, start where you are. I mean, start where you are. If you're hitting doors in your own hometown, if you can't sell units in your own hometown, if you can't get your own local radio station to pick up a song, you don't want to, there's no sense in skipping straight to Nashville or LA or New York trying to get a record deal. Work where you are with the doors that are open to you there and work as hard as you can and encourage your child, your children to, to follow what they love, but make sure there's backup plans and make sure they know this is what this looks like and this is the path to get there. And even that isn't a guaranteed path. Yes. Well, uh, 
already our time's up. <laughs> ah, Can you believe that? That, that went was so fast. fast, wasn't it? This is great. So uh, you can get more information about uh, Jenny Simmons, uh, her music, and her books, which we are going to talk about next week. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and you can get that information at JennySimmons.com. And that's J-E-N-N-Y, mm-hmm. Simmons with two M's. And uh, you can get information about her music, her CDs, her books. Uh, she has a blog. Uh, for those moms, a lot of, <laughs> lot of, lot of great resources there. Jenny, thank you so much for being on the show today. I'm really looking forward to next week. Thanks for having me. Me too. The music you are listening to is from my scripture memory record, and I want to give it to you for free. Just go to my website, rickaltizer.com, and click contact. Altizer is spelled A-L-T-I-Z-E-R. Or how about liking my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Show. I want to thank Paul Winkler, the investor coach, for sponsoring this show, and I want to thank you for listening. So be sure to check us out again next week as we discuss how we communicate the gospel through media to our culture. Let's be clear so the world can hear. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening.